We've seen a little bit more confidence from publishers lately to try radical, bold new takes on things. And in a few cases, they do pay off, but it's very risky. They tend to fail more often than they succeed. And there's a few reasons for that. I mean, if you take a look at the Immortal Hulk, it's working. People are buying it. It's got a lot of buzz for the title. It's doing things for the Hulk that really hasn't existed since... You probably have to go back to Peter David when you had this much kind of loyalty and, and fan following for the book. So why don't uh, why don't poor comics do this, do these radical changes? Or maybe a better question is, when should they not? Hey everybody, this is Perch. If you take the long view of comics, meaning like the 30-year view, and already, by the way, we're off on the wrong track for a lot of people who kind of struggle to look at comics beyond the last 5, 10 years. Um, I, I was having a conversation with, uh, with a guy yesterday who was saying that, you know, really going any further back than Civil War is kind of pointless when it comes to comics. And maybe it's time for the publishers to kind of draw a line in the sand and say, you know, nothing that happened before Civil War matters, uh, which is horrifying to me. I, I, I find that entire concept just terrifying and, and terrible because there's so many epic stories that you have in the past. And there's stories that when it's convenient, certainly writers like to draw from them. And in fact, the argument, you know, why we're in on this was, you know, talking about kind of the bold new direction of Immortal Hulk. And I would argue that part of what makes Immortal Hulk work and why it is as popular as it is, is that Al Ewing, in addition to you know playing up horror and doing something very different from the character that's clicked, uh, he's also going into a lot of past history. He's going into a lot of things that existed from the Peter David runner, or frankly, much farther back than that. And so it's this mix of kind of a surprising new genre or just something kind of you know new and unique in comics with a lot of deep connection to the history now i i you know i generally have liked the run i i thought that you know at times ewing does humor in his um in his book that feels like oddly disconnected from the rest of the story a lot of what he did with roxon and to particularly how roxon was influencing social media and they had like rock's face for kind of their version of Facebook. And it was just, it felt very clunky and very odd for his story. But in general, uh, that, that book has been pretty solid. It's got, you know, a nice horror element. They're doing different things with the Hulk. You got the feeling like they're building on kind of the character's mythology. And so they're, they're adding to the character while at the same time, it it's, it's new and yet not subtractive. And I think that's the problem when a lot of companies go in the bold, all new, all different direction is they subtract more than add. A lot of people, when in defense of kind of this let's up in the status quo, will point to giant size X-Men and the, the idea of like if Chris Claremont hadn't upended the status quo and done all new things and brought in completely new team members, well, you know, the X-Men would have basically been a canceled title today. It wouldn't have been anywhere close to the popularity that it had. Uh, which is is true enough, except Claremont also was kind of deeply respecting the Magnetos and the dynamic with Professor Xavier and and building on that dynamic, uh, the relationship with Havoc and Polaris, a lot of things that existed prior to Giant Size X Men. Uh, you know, Claremont was heavily tapping into, and so it was a bold new direction, but not subtractive, not at the expense of what came before. And in a lot of cases, I think that publishers and writers, they use the bold new direction kind of tag and mandate to basically erase. The, you know, their, their, their plan and their goal is not to kind of, you know, put a new spin on a character. It's to be, allow them to dump everything that came before and just do new. And for that to be successful, I think you're, you're, it's like a huge, huge gamble. You're basically just hoping that you've got it right. You're hoping that you manage to kind of thread the needle of, you know, a successful, <laughs> basically your, your bold new idea is going to be accepted, is new enough, unique enough, not dumb, doesn't feel inorganic. That's a lot of ifs. 
And when you have an established audience, it's used to a certain format. And, and we've talked about this before, but you know, one of the things about continuity and fans and collectors is they're buying in. It's, it's, in fact, it's like TV, you buy in with your time. And with comics, you buy in with your time and your wallet. You know, readers are not immune or, or unaware of the amount of money they're spending on comics and the amount of time that they invest into reading them, collecting them, put it in bags, all that kind of crap. It's, uh, you know, TV is much more easy to come and go with. And so when you have that kind of devotion, that loyalty, that following, that collector's market, you, you, you know, people need to take into account that in addition to just giving the publisher or giving the writer, whoever it is, their time, they're also, you know, they're, they're literally giving them money. They are, they're paying for this service. So it, that's why people get all hung up about it. I've had some of you have mentioned in the comments things along the lines of, you know, why is it that uh, readers, why, why do they, you know, should they just relax? You know, the, the creators don't owe them anything. The creators don't owe them an explanation. I mean, on some level, sure, that's true. Nobody owes anybody anything in those terms. But at the same time, it's, uh, it, you know, th there is a transaction taking place of time, investment, money, and passion. And so it's not just trivial. So if you're going to break the status quo, you're going to go in a bold new, brand new direction. The safest way to do it is, by and large, what Al Ewing has done what Chris Claremont did way back when, what Jonathan Hickman somewhat did, or mostly did, uh, with his new series, uh, it, it is, you, you need to be able to, to carefully, carefully balance a uh, brand new status quo, plenty of respect and acknowledgement of the past. It's like you're telling fans directly, hey, you know, you are, uh, you like this property, you like this character, you like this book. Um, I'm glad you like it because I'm going to take it in some new directions. But don't worry, I am watching out for you. I am going to make sure that you're along for that ride, that you're buckled in, that you're coming with us. I'm not going, you're not going to wake up one morning and we're going to say, hey, we're doing something new now. So, um, you know, come along if you want or jump off if you want. It doesn't matter to us. When, you, when you're able to do new while acknowledging the past, you're basically telling people, hey, I love it as much as you do, and let's try some new things together. And that's the key. And that's what's often been missed with a lot of other books when they do a, you know, a, a huge status quo changing thing. And, and often, by the way, the biggest reason why it fails is time. It's a, you know, a too much of a hurry to want to get to the new status quo, a you know, freeing by, by just, let's just dump everything and start new in this one issue. Let's go. You take, for example, the introduction of Riri Williams in Iron Man and how Bendis did that. You know, was Riri, Riri, <laughs> Riri saying it crazy, was Riri an interesting character? It could be. Every character has a potential to be interesting and, and powerful. And I, I would argue that e-viewing has done a pretty good job of, of making that character readable and, and solid and, and three-dimensional. But in Iron Man, the character is introduced over the course of, like, two issues with a ton, an absolute ton of exposition about why we should care, as opposed to taking our time and showing you why you could care. If you look at what Hickman did with House of X, Powers of Ten, when he upended the X-Men status quo, that was 12 issues, which is still not a ton, but, you know, extra-sized. Uh, 12 issues of comics is a hell of a lot more than we normally get. And, you know, it, it basically carried us from one place to another, introducing that as status quo. To a lot of people, it's still too, too fast. And status, you know, taking care and getting to your destination does not mean decompression and doing it over 50 issues. It means, you know, basically introducing the path, saying, you know, we're, we're going to do some new things, and here's how we're going to do them, and here's why it still maps to what happened before. And here's why what you've been caring about and reading about and spending your money on, here's why that hasn't been flushed down the toilet, why it's still relevant. And I, I, I don't think any of these things are that hard to do. It just takes a little bit of care, a little bit of time, and you have to go in with the right fundamentals. And one of those clear fundamentals is, hey, I respect what came before. And not, not just lip service. By the way, uh, you know, when, when sometimes I've, I've heard some pushback saying, well, you know, 
respect what came before is a dog whistle. I, I absolutely hate that term, by the way, but is a dog whistle for never change anything, appeal to the old white dude, middle-aged fans. Um, that's, I, no, actually respecting what came before also includes change. If you respect what came before, you wouldn't just, you know, lock everything and never make any adjustments and just keep doing the same songs over and over again. Respecting what came before means growth. It does mean evolving the characters. It means somebody has nicely laid out an entire roadmap for you of how things can change, evolve, and grow, and you take advantage of that. Respecting what came before does not mean paralysis. It doesn't mean stuck. And I think everybody, you know, I think we can all recognize that and we can get some good things out of it. But what about you? What are some examples of comics that did change radically and you liked it versus ones that changed radically and it was just, it was DOA from the start? By the way, you can almost always tell that the bold new directions of comics that are not thought out well and not done well rarely last a year. And, and usually are, you know, the, pull, the plug is pulled earlier than that. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Follow wherever you like. Send me an email. But most importantly, thanks for listening.